Hi all. In this episode of Total Pro Build, we finish up the armor and we deck it, we put in a daggerboard case, basically now just a little bit of sanding and she's ready for paint. Yeah, it is, that's the armor. And I'm pretty happy with the results. And take care guys, all the best Balkan shipyards. Okay, so fiberglass in the armor. So I use uh, use whatever epoxy I can find in a hardware shop. This is 80 gram glass, and uh, the epoxy is thick. That's the difference between uh, marine epoxies and hardware shop epoxies. That uh, the marine epoxies are much thinner and they wet out. They wet out much easier, but I can't get it here, and I don't know, maybe I couldn't even afford it if it came, because they are expensive. We are paying uh, 15 euro a litre, and I've, I've had success with the stuff. It wets out eventually, you just have to be persistent, consistent, don't stop, keep on, eventually it goes through. And uh, it's strong and it's slightly flexible, I actually think this epoxy is pretty good, I like it. Here's the hull, almost, almost done, let's uh, go another about 30 grams over here of epoxy to mix up and this will do it. Uh, when it 80 grams of uh, cloth so I maybe wear it out with about a hundred maybe 120 grams of epoxy not more I really put in an effort to to pull all the excess epoxy and squeeze uh, squish it along and move it along and but more goes because some of it seeps into the wood Okay, so in episode one, I showed how I did this bow only with thickened epoxy on the inside and no fiberglass inside. So basically, now it gets two layers of, of glass outside on the whole bow. And if a little bit of glass is missing, then I, I will add on a little piece. So, yeah, I, I, cut, I cut this little bit overhanging, then I cut it down the middle up to here. And now I'll wet out the boat, glue it on, and then this one overlaps it like that just a little bit. There's a small overlap over here and it's enough. And there you go. And basically, then if I've got any issues over here, usually over here, it opens up and you're left without glass. So then I just put on a couple patches. There over there it wasn't long enough to go all the way down so I added on a patch now I'm going to fiberglass when I'm fiberglassing that side and finishing it when I'm epoxying over there I'll just come and wet this out in a second so now I've got this to finish and yeah this this shouldn't be more than about 30 grams of epoxy to do this whole thing and the less you mix the easier it is because if you mix a big batch of say a hundred you know you, you, you'll be halfway through and the stuff might start kicking and it gets a little bit more just, and it just gets harder to wear out and stuff so I usually mix uh, quantities of about 30, 40, 50 grams not more and uh, and then I know that it's gonna be it's not gonna start setting while I'm wetting out because it, it is difficult to wet out because the epoxy is thick Filling the weave, the super simple, and it pays off. These are disposable rollers. I prefer not the spongy ones, these ones. I don't know what they are, they got like little hair on them. They're just more rigid, and you can clean them once or twice in acetone. So let's say I'm going to fill the weave over here now. I'm going to finish this, and then I might do it again in about like two hours or something. So I'll leave this lying in acetone. Whereas the, the, the normal sponge ones doesn't work so well. So yeah, just pour a little bit on a boat and it's as simple as this. 
no big deal. And you see how the matte, the matte cloth suddenly goes glossy and shiny. And then you know that it's full. Pour a little bit more. And go. Most important is the corners. So I probably will do this in a couple hours again and I'll definitely put an effort into the corners themselves because that's when you're sanding, that's where the most goes and suddenly you find that you've cut away all the glass and so on and so forth. So the corners must be really, really saturated properly and uh, you want your fiberglass under the epoxy. Basically, what usually happens is that the wood, the wood sucks up the epoxy and, and your glass just stays lying on the top and you see all the squares and all the stuff and if you sand that you just cut it away and you've done actually nothing so basically you have to give back what's what's gone down into the wood itself and that's the whole point of the of the of the of the exercise Once uh, you fill the weave, then it goes all shiny where there's over here that's matte because it hasn't been filled up yet. And over here you could see maybe the difference a little bit better. Uh, so I'm focusing. Okay, so that's what it looks like over here. It hasn't been filled yet. Well, as here, it has been. So it's much shinier and much fuller. Yeah, I got my rocket stove running. Got old Zorro happening. He's burning up two kilowatts an hour at the moment. Uh, I'm almost coming up to 30 degrees in here. And yeah, I just want to, I want, I want the stuff to kick. So now when I put on a second layer, it doesn't move the first one. But that's pretty nice and shiny to me. But there are a few imperfections here and there. And I'll just go over one more time with the roller through the whole hull and I know it'll work out well. So that's the bit you're going to use for cutting holes. The, 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 the ball bearing runs along the, the dagger board case and then it will cut the case. So we're going to cut the bottom of the boat, put on a mask, So basically, fiberglass diamond up to about, about three centimeters above the waterline. I believe that this armor, according to the calculations, when it's loaded, I've calculated because I want to have a little bit of drinking water inside the armor. And then, like I said, uh, some of our weight will be onto the armor because we'll be sitting on the bridge deck, and then the bridge deck itself, and then the armor itself, and. I've, I've come to about 75, 80 kilos uh, under sailing conditions. That's what should be on the armor. And uh, that displacement, 75 kilos, is 14 centimeters draft. 
So that's that's where I have 80 liters of displacement at 14 centimeters loft. So now I'm I'm putting in these guys. They have to be. I need another 20 and a half centimeters high. That's where the uckers are gonna come. 20, a little bit more than 20 centimeters off the gunnel. Higher up. So I'm gluing in these guys with PU and later on I'll change these screws for bronze or something. There's my dagger board in place and yeah, works really nicely. And now we have to start finishing up the dagger board and Fiberglass now around here. Dagger board case. Sanded. Sanded it really well all around. Gave it a nice radius over here. And I sanded it about three centimeters going down. And uh, now I use 80 gram glass. I wet it out really well. I'll soak this wood with epoxy. And then I'll put the glass over and then I'll wet that out. And it's a done deal. This boat's not going to be living in the water. It might stay in the water for a few days. And then it will be on the beach. And then it will be here. And then it will be on the roof of the car. And then it will be in storage. And I don't know what. So I'm not going to put in too much of an effort into that. Okay, template for the deck of the AMA. So it's the usual case. Where there's... I put on a piece and... And then I add on pieces onto it. It's just easier that way. So it cut out this, put it down in place, put that one in place, and then just glue on a piece between the two. <clears throat> I can't close off these guys because then I can't get my deck on. So first I'll put the deck on, and then I will close up that. There's a dagger board in place, and. That's the Vaca side, Vaca goes there. That's why these ones are coming out like that and those ones are going on more of an angle. It's just, uh, so you get a longer base and then you got your Akas or, you know, there's a shorter span between the Ama and the Vaca. And then, because the dagger board will be pulling the armor and will be wanting to bend the armor, say. So the wider base on the Akers will just support the armor a little bit better. And that's why it's kind of looking a little bit weird now. So after I made both templates, then uh, I cut out the decks, Formula Meter Poplar. Even though I have a template, I still always like leaving it big, I don't know, five millimeters, a centimeter. It's, it's just better that way, you know, less risk. Uh, basically, the template just gives me these things. And then all the rest, I leave it big. Here, again, so this one's cut exactly. It was long. This one is long. This one was long. I cut it now according to the center line. Now, I put down this one, I put this one on top, we're going to mark my two lines, then I'll cut this one and it'll be smack in the middle with a perfect fit. This is an epoxy primer for steel. Two to one mix with the hardener. And the easiest way to get a two to one would be take a stick, mark how however many centimeters you want and then half of that higher up so first we'll put in the epoxy the paint itself up to the lower mark Okay, I've reached the lower mark. And now I'll put the hardener into the top. And 
And it's ready to go. Mix thoroughly. Upload the mixes for a couple minutes. Make sure it's really mixed up. And then with the load, I'm gonna just do the armor inside. Here's the armor. Primed it once inside. Here's the gas for that will hold the hackers. Dagger board case has been put in on a slight angle airway on purpose. Really small angle, maybe five degrees or something. So the dagger board is is in on an angle. Uh, now got my decks, cut them out. Now I want to I'm gonna I'm gonna prime the deck on the bottom. So I put I put the deck on the boat. I trace the external line going along the hull. Under here. Let's go with my pencil all the way around. And then once I got my external line, then I want to paint this whole thing with the uh, epoxy primer, but I don't want to paint where I'm going to be epoxying it to the hull, where I'm going to be gluing it to the hull. So therefore, I got my external line. Here yeah, you can see it a little bit better. This is the thickness of the hull, of the gunnel, of the shear clamp. And now, so that's the same thickness. And now just save time. I put it on my external line and with my pencil I just run along. So I've done this, I'm going to do that, then that and that. And I'll paint only in between. Here's the bulkhead, so I've marked that one out too. I'm not going to paint, on both sides I'll paint. I will not put any paint over here. I deck the armor, left it slightly overhanging. And I'll either cut it with a router or with a pull saw. I'll see which way is better. I started taking out uh, these little wooden washers. I'm taking them out with the machine. <laughs> As a void, fold up, thickened epoxy piece of wood, and then fiberglass on top, 80 grams. And I added on these guys yesterday while I was putting a deck on, so I put them on also, just so you know everything's wet with epoxy, might as well put it on, otherwise, you have to sand it and stuff. And that's basically the deck. Four millimeters, pop-up line. 